Making music and performing are often thought of singularly as elements of the creative arts, but the business side of it can be just as important. International institution Henley Business School is offering a sizable bursary focusing on music and the creative industries. Dean of Henley Business School, John Foster Pedley, joins us now in studio. John, always good to have you with us. Thank Thanks, you for John. coming in. Tell us what this bursary is all about. Well, we've got several of them, actually, but they're mm -hmm. for the MBA and for our postgraduate diplomas, and we have one for the music and creative industries. So the first one we have is the Johnny Clegg Scholarship, which we like to give to performing artists of one sort who don't have the money really to do, do it um, for themselves, but who have such talent and also want to make a contribution towards the development of the music industry and creative industries in South Africa. And the next one is uh, a couple of scholarships we have for the um, music and creative industries. Now, because creative industries are so fundamental to the growth of our economy and they're so inspiring and young people want to go in them, that if we, if we nurture those, we're going to have an economy that's really diversified, fashionable, exciting to be part of, and we really want to support that development because we think the future of South Africa is a lot more than mining and agriculture. Great as those industries are, don't get me wrong. <laughs> and we want to give scholarships to people who want to make a contribution towards developing those areas. I, I'm so interested in what you have to say about that. Well, I hope because, so, because you're a creative you, person. <laughs> well, to some extent. But, but certainly the, the kind of people you're talking about here are probably stereotyped as the guys who are going to go into an industry where mm. they'll make no money. So, mm. I mean, even the young people who want to study uh, the creative arts or music uh, are not often given the chance to because they're told it's a dead-end career in, in terms of of money making how, how are you how are you able to to disprove that theory well to begin with it it's, it's, it's of course that has to be wrong because when you look around you what happens is is the creative industries are are building at a pace that's faster generally than the underlying industries look retails growing fast but the creative industries employ something like 10 percent of people in South Africa now um, and and have the capacity to employ a lot more than that and apart from anything else, from working within the creative industries, you get the skills of imagination, innovation that you can use in any other industry mm -hmm. as well. So they're really the, 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 the fire starter for a new sort of economy, and we really need to support them. And in the old days, you said, no, don't go into music because you'll never make any money. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's true, <laughs> but what we're trying to do now for many, many people is, is to give them the skills of how to run their own businesses as musicians, as artists, as fashion designers, as architects, as teachers, as inspired teachers, and let them build up businesses that are really value generating, rather than just being the people who are employed to come and do gigs. Right. And so we want to have people who are entrepreneurs and have that business insight to develop industries, new types of industries for South Africa, on which we can build this diversified and fascinating economy that we all sit in. You know, we, we often see those two elements as mutually exclusive. Mm. Either you're a, a musician or a dancer or a writer, you know, you're an artist or you're a business person. A, and many may look at this degree and say, I, is it structured in too formal a way for, for me to be able to, to meld those two elements? Not at all, because look, we all have a specialist part of our career. Maybe we're specialist performers or specialist engineers or technical people. But as you grow and become a manager, you start to have to use different talents. And when you have to energize people, you want to know how to get more than just the logic. You need to get the magic and the heart of people and the imagination of people out. And for that, you need a creative heart as well. And also, you need to manage enterprises in a way that's just not continuing on in the same way. When you've got to reinvent your enterprise, reinvent your business because of competition, you need imagination. You need the skills of design and of thinking about creative activities and how you can turn your enterprise into something that's something new and is also going to provide revenue for you in a new direction. So, so in, in terms of the structure of these degrees, how, how much of them uh, comprises that, that sort of innovation, that creative decision making? Well, to begin with, it's the same MBA that you will see the bankers and the industrialists on. So you will share time with those people. And that's a good thing, both for you and for them. Because we want creatives to go onto the MBA to help spark those people into a new direction. So they don't just follow the same old path. And we want the other people from the traditional industries to teach some of those skills of business to the people in the creative sector. So instead of just being performers, they create value generating, job empowering, job creating enterprises that can be the foundation of a, of a better economy. So the, so what you have in there is also specialized areas in which we can understand how to work with creatives, um, how to understand IP, 
you know, how to think in terms of ways of design thinking rather than just analytical thinking, how to do interpretation, how to do complex system thinking. This is all part of the creative parcel, if you like. And those things are, are, are the stuff you would learn on a really good MBA. So, so there's a lot of peer learning as well. A yeah. lot of peer learning. In fact, that's a really important point, Joanne, because if you're just learning by yourself in a box, sitting there reading books, you're just kind of picking up what you can make out of those books. But when you're working with a group of people who are engaging in good challenge, good dialogue, but in a way that's supporting each other, you're going to learn a lot more. So we believe in collaborative learning and also family-friendly learning. We don't want to create environments where you come and do the Marriage Breakup Academy. <laughs> you know, that doesn't have to be the Married Making Babies Academy either, <laughs> but you want somewhere in between mm -hmm. that, you, that you're trying to help people develop their family life and develop their relationships while they're doing the MBA, because that is what you want leaders to do in the real world anyway. You don't want to have these really hard-nosed leaders who are just telling you to sacrifice yourself for the job. That's not how work is anymore, and that's certainly how I don't want my kids to grow up. I want them to grow up into a world that's exciting for them to work in, where their full capacities of imagination, where their, their critical faculties, but their innovative faculties um, guide them, and where they actually follow their own true north. It's not just, I've got a career for life. That You might have a career for a while, but then you reinvent yourself and go in a different direction, and then maybe do that again. So you follow your own growth, and, and the whole of you becomes part of, of your work environment, not, not just that intellectual and very buttoned-down part that corporate life seems to ask for sometimes. Mm. John, roughly how much are these bursaries worth? Each one's about a quarter of a million rand, so that's, um, and a couple of them, we've got several free bursaries, so there's, and we're also with the African Heroes Bursary, which um, I haven't mentioned, but it's for, for those people who are committing themselves to a new form of activism, to build this positive, creative Africa, and that Africa which is very different from what we see in South Africa that we've seen over the last few years, that sense of hope is within it, and we want to give some people who've really got that spirit in them, we want to give them free MBAs. So we've got about a million or two million worth of bursaries actually to give away okay. for people who fulfill that. But you really need to be somebody who's got a, the heart of an activist or somebody who wants to make a difference. And you've got to be able to prove that that is you, not just you wish to do that. Show that evidence that you've, you've done that sort of work and that you have, of course, to meet the criteria to do an MBA or postgraduate, postgraduate diploma. Right. And those are the people that we want to support as the foundations of the new South Africa who will build for our children and our grandchildren the sort of world that we would like to leave behind us. John, how does one get to, to know more about these or get more information about these bursaries and how to apply for them? Well, Google Henley South Africa and it's www.henleysa.ac.za and uh, just give us a call or follow us on Twitter or look us up on Facebook, you'll find us, Henley Africa, and we're really easy to find. And we sit at the, at the top of Rivonia Road by Pulsoff, we've got a lovely campus there. We're an international business school, it's triple accredited, one of the few in the world that's triple accredited. And you get with us an international MBA qualification. And I have to say this because I, I need to, we actually voted the number one alumni network in the world by The Economist last year for potential to network above all the other business schools you've ever heard of. And I won't mention them, but we're above <laughs> all of those. So that one criteria. All right. Just, uh, just one last quick uh, detail here. When is the deadline to apply for these bursaries? Well, our next intake's around May, and you should be getting your um, applications in now. So we've got a few weeks to go, but not too many. So if I were you, and if you wanted to do it, <laughs> not that you do, Joanne, but it would be welcome, then I will get my application in as soon as you can. So just go on the website, give us a call, ask for advice, phone us. We've got some fantastic people at Henley who want to help, and um, they'll give you all the advice and information you need. Sounds fascinating. Thank you so much for coming in to talk us through what's on offer, John. Lovely to have you with us. John Foster Pedley is the Dean of Henley Business School.